Hello, in this tutorial, we are going to prepare a two-step slide with nice pictures and icons on the bottom. Such a slide could be easily changed into several more steps or for example, something like that. Let us start by working with the pictures. I will right click, layout and select a blank layout for me. Let me try and get some free pictures. I'll use unsplash.com. You could use Pexels. Uh, what I did, I simply typed in biking and I selected picture number one and picture number two. I don't even have to download it. I'll just right click, copy image. I go into PowerPoint and I press Ctrl V to bring that in. I'm doing this for both pictures, copy image. And now two pictures are inside of PowerPoint. I want the pictures, if you see on this slide, to be rounded. To achieve that, I'm selecting the first picture, shift clicking on, clicking my shift and selecting the second one. Now both are selected at the same time. I'm going to picture format, opening the crop options, crop to shape, and I'll select a circle. Now I need to change the aspect ratio. I need to click on each one separately. I'll select the first one, crop aspect ratio one to one. This will make a perfect circle. This one, crop aspect ratio one to one square. Now I have two perfectly rounded pictures, but you can see the size is different. What I do when I have a different size, I simply go into the sizing options here on the right side and I type in, for example, six and it automatically makes it smaller. I'll do the same for the second picture. Now both pictures are perfectly equal towards each other. All right, my next step, since I want a colorful overlay here, something like this, I need to grayscale those pictures. I'm selecting both of them. I'm going to the picture format tools and under the color options, the second option will be grayscale. Okay, I have the grayscale and actually I wanted the bikes themselves to be a bit bigger. If you want that as well, you can click on the picture, you can directly click on the crop option and you can simply enlarge the picture in the background. So the biker is a bit more prominent or maybe he's a cyclist, not a biker. I'm telling this wrong. Okay, those two cyclists on a bike, okay. So we have our groundwork prepared. Now the shape in the background. For the shape in the background, I went to insert shapes and I'm using a rounded rectangle. I want this rounded rectangle to be of the height of this picture. It will be easy because PowerPoint will help me with that. And I want a maximum amount of roundness. So essentially I will make a big roundness behind that. I will right click, send that to back. For the shape fill, I'll use my eyedropper and one of the two color schemes. Let's maybe go for the darker one, the upper one, and I made this, mm, let me make this a bit bigger. Okay, something like that, and we are ready. I'll press Ctrl D to duplicate this element, and I can see this ugly outline outside here, this blue outline. I can correct that by going to shape outline and selecting no outline. I'll make sure to select the previous object and do this as well. Okay, let me put that here exactly on the picture, right click, send to back. Now I have prepared those two shape rectangular objects. I could leave this as is, but I want some kind of overlay over the pictures. As I remember, going to picture format, the pictures are six centimeters for myself. So I'm going again to insert shapes. I'm using a circle and I'm just pressing down here within PowerPoint. I press six, and six for the width as well. Shape outline, no outline, shape fill. Now let's get this red color. I want this red color to be some kind of overlay over this picture. I can right click, select format shape, and on the format shape options, I will increase the transparency just so we see the picture. For example, to 40%. This should be fine. I'll press Ctrl D and put that here. And I'm essentially ready with the design of this shape. I will once again duplicate this shape because I want some kind of introduction here on the top side. This is what I did on the original slide. So let's make it similar. Okay, this will be the title area. Now I can select everything here, press Ctrl G to group, select everything here, press Ctrl G to group. This is my initial group. To populate this slide with some text, I used actually the Montserrat font. I'll use the Montserrat font here as well. If you don't have the Montserrat font installed, 
you can of course use any other font you like. I'll go to insert text box. I'll insert the text box a little lower and I'll just start typing in our journey, our journey. Okay, our journey. I'll center the text. I'll make the text bigger. I'll change the font in my case into Montserrat and I will make this bold. Of course, the text would be barely visible now on this dark background, so we have to change the text color to white. I think all that will be pretty self-explanatory. I can press Ctrl D and I can make the font now much, much smaller. Here's, here it goes, our journey. Just some text here, maybe even smaller. I'll put this perfectly in the middle. I'll make sure to Ctrl G group that and I want to make sure under shape format align that this is perfectly in the center of the slide. Okay, it is beautiful. Now I could again add some text. For example, step one, it doesn't have to be step one, step two, but I'll use the steps. Again, Montserrat, bold, and for the text color, I want actually it to be white. Okay, step number one, this is just one example of doing this kind of slide. Of course, if you want subtext to be here, I would maybe duplicate this. I would make the text much, much smaller, 16 or 18 points, uh, remove the control B, and here could be some text to use on the slide. And now I would maybe put some icons in the middle here because the slide looks a little empty. What can we do to add icons here? I actually like to use SVG icons because I can recolor them if I have the newest version of PowerPoint. Since PowerPoint 2019, you can recolor SVG icons. And what icons do we have? For example, on uxwing.com or svgrepo.com, we have plenty of free icons to use. UXWing is very nice because we don't even have to credit the authors, but I will happily do that. Let's maybe, this is an electric bike. And what you can see, license, all icons are free to use for any personal and commercial projects. I will not download the PNG, I will download the SVG. After downloading, I have bike number one and bike number two. This is what I named my icons and I brought them directly into PowerPoint. Let me start to, and it will be difficult to make icons always perfectly to the same size. You have to kind of eyeball it because many icons are different. For example, this is a little thicker than that one. And I think the thicker one should be a little smaller. Even this looks okay. I would maybe make it even a bit smaller. And for the colors, I'll put this here under graphics format. Since this is an SVG, I can change the color directly. A nice feature. I'll put that here. And we have prepared this well, this as well white, and we have prepared our journey slide. If you need more text in the middle, I could, for example, of course, I could use uh, some more text. I will just type in lorem one uh, to make one example sentence. For the color, under shape format text fill, I would use a gray one. I would use a gray so it doesn't appear as strong as the original steps here. And I would just put it higher. Of course, the font needs to be changed because by default, PowerPoint selected Calibri. I would select Montserrat so everything is consistent to each other. And this way, everything looks better, in my opinion. This is the finalized slide. If you need any changes, you can, of course, duplicate this slide. For example, get rid of the text, put the steps a little higher, duplicate it, boom, and you have four steps. If you want the slide different, you can again take this, put this here, take this, put this here, take this one, take this one, put it like that. You could take all four and you could position them on the slide. Of course, it would be useful if I group them and organize them a little better, but I just wanted to show you quickly how I organized and created more slides from the original initial slide. Thank you very much for watching. My name is Andrew Pach. If you would like to continue learning PowerPoint with me, you have links to my online courses up here in the exclamation mark and in the description below. I'd be honored to have a student like you with me and I'll make sure to teach you as much PowerPoint as possible. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in other tutorials like this. Have a nice day.